So now we need to talk about how we're going to put the boat on the water. We've got to the ramp, we're ready to go. Let's talk about launching the boat. Um, most of this is about backing up a trailer. And this is a skill that will serve you in many situations, not just with trailering, uh, trailering a boat. If you can get good backing up a trailer, um, it's a very useful skill. So we're gonna practice it. Um, we're gonna go out to the parking lot, we're gonna go to the ramps, I'm gonna have you guys practice. Um, I have a few tips um, about backing up a trailer. One of the things that I always tell people is the turns are brief but intense. What does that mean? That means is that until you get really good, very subtle movements of the steering wheel are not very helpful. Now in normal driving, you want to be very subtle, right? You don't want to be jerking the steering wheel back and forth all the time. You want to be smooth and easy. Backing up a trailer, I would say, I would argue is the opposite. You want to be very intense, meaning you want to turn it a lot in one direction, but you don't want to hold it there. And so you're going to be making very radical corrections in a brief time. And as we practice, that'll make sense. But so what I'm trying to say is, is if you want to try to move the trailer, if the trailer is not going where you want to, you don't want to just kind of ease it over. You want to really correct, but then really come back very quickly. And then when you get good, you'll be a little bit, you can go a little bit easier, but when you're first learning. So that's one tip that I have. Um, if you're, since you're going backwards, you turn the steering wheel in the opposite direction. So if you want the boat to go that way, you turn the steering wheel the, the other way. And so it's not like if you were just backing the truck up and you wanted the truck to go that way, you'd turn the steering wheel that way and you'd go that way. But since you've got a trailer and you've got a pivot point, if you want the trailer to go that way, you need to turn the steering wheel the other way, make the truck go the other way. Um, another tip that I, I can think of is if you have to think about that while you're doing it, you're not going to do it very well. That's why we practice is so that it, it, it happens um, involuntarily, but that's what's going on. A lot of people will say to put your hand at the bottom of the steering wheel and then you can move your hand where you want the trailer to go. That's another way to think about it. I don't like that though. I like to have my hands up here. Um, if you start to jackknife, which means if the angle between the trailer and the truck starts to get very small and it starts to pinch, stop, go forward, and straighten it out. If it starts to get too far off of center, um, then it's just gonna get worse very quickly. And if you try and fix that, um, you're gonna have a tough time fixing it, plus you're going to put the truck way over into the other lane. If, you, you know, if it starts to go bad, just stop, pull forward, and try again. And of course, the most obvious and best suggestion I have is practice, practice, practice. And we like to practice when no one's around. Don't practice when it's a very busy day. Don't go out on July 4th and try to practice because everybody's trying to get in. People aren't going to be patient. Plus, people tend to get flustered when there are other people waiting for them, right? So find a time, find a ramp that's not busy and practice. Or do like what we're gonna do in lab, go out to a parking lot and just practice in the parking lot. Um, that's the only way to really get good at this. Now, one of the things we're also gonna practice and that I think is a really important skill that'll really help you is to learn to use your mirrors. If you can back using your mirrors, you can back anywhere. And the reason is the mirrors allow you to see the edges better. You get to see the outside edge of the trailer and so you can see exactly where it's going. So if you were like at the edge of the ramp, you can see very easily how close to the edge you are. If you're looking over your shoulder, you can't really see those outside portions of the trailer. Um, there's also a lot of times when if you look over through the back window, you can't see the trailer. For example, when you're reloading the boat. So the boat's not on the trailer. The trailer is very low profile. You look over your shoulder, a lot of times you can't even see it. And it's very difficult to back up a trailer if you can't see what the trailer is doing. So if you get comfortable with those mirrors, you can always see what's going on. And in fact, I think once you get good with it, it's easier because you're not having to stretch around so much. You can just use those mirrors and put it wherever you want. Um, if you have 
the back window open, you do want to constantly check over your shoulder in the back window in case you, and there might be something like directly behind the trailer, which you can't see with the mirrors. But on a boat ramp, that's very unlikely. So my best suggestion to you when trying to learn to use the mirrors is to turn to the boat. And what does that mean? That means that if the boat is not going straight, it'll show up more in one mirror than the other. And if that's happening, then you know that the boat is not straight. And if you turn the steering wheel to the mirror that shows more of the boat, that will automatically correct. And so let me show you what I'm talking about. Here, you know, I'm backing up. And if you'll notice, I can see more of the boat in the right mirror than the left mirror. That means that the boat is not straight. If it's straight, I should see it equally in both mirrors, right? If I'm seeing more of it in one mirror, then it's not straight. And so if I turn the steering wheel toward that mirror, that will automatically bring the truck around and straighten it out. And in this example, you know, I've gone too far. And so now I've got too much boat in this mirror, so I'm going to turn to the left mirror until I straighten out. And again, you know, brief, intense movements are a little bit better, uh, but you have to constantly be watching these. And, and if you're not watching, you could very easily jackknife. Okay, so we're going to practice backing up. Uh, when we're at the ramp, there are a few things that you need to, to again, just get in the habit of doing every time. Um, we call this staging. This is when we're getting the boat ready before we launch it. Uh, number one rule, don't stage on the ramp. That's just rude. And a lot of people do it and it annoys me. But a lot of people will park right down on the ramp and then they'll get out and get their boat ready. And that just slows things down for everybody. Stage somewhere else and then back into the ramp when it's your turn. Um, get in the habit of unplugging the trailer lights. A lot of People will tell you, you know, the lights are sealed and they're fine, but they don't stay sealed. They never stay sealed. And so as soon as you dunk them in the water, you're putting that whole light into the water. And so, of course, you're stepping on the brakes as you're backing up. And so if the lights are plugged in, that means that light is being heated up underwater, which means the electricity is flowing underwater, which means it can short out. You can blow a fuse. Uh, you know, you've got that hot bulb hitting the cold water, which is a good way to break it. A lot of new trailers have LEDs where this might not be a problem. But look, it, it, no matter how well everything is sealed up, eventually water is going to get in there. And if you just unplug the trailer lights, they can get dunked. But when you pull it out, the water drains out. I promise you it'll make your, your lights last longer. Um, now at the front, you know, we've got the boat. We should have it attached in two places, the secondary bow chain and the winch. I don't like to unhook both of those. One, I have been on ramps in the winter when the boat's been cold and the rails are frozen and it's steep enough, you start to back down and the boat slides off the trailer. That has happened to me more than once. All right, and so that I've learned from experience. So I don't like to unhook it. Now you may be in the summer, on a, uh, a shallow ramp and you know that's not going to happen but another problem is is if you back that into the water and the boat starts to float off if the motor doesn't start now what are you going to do so i think it's just a good habit to leave the winch connected until the motor starts and you know everything is good you know the boat's not going to slide off the trailer you know the boat's not going to float away and then somebody can unhook it and off you go don't forget to put the plug in. That's obvious. Um, also, make sure that you have removed all straps and motor supports. Again, this is from experience. It's just a natural thing for me to do now, but every once in a while, I, there have been times in the, in the past where I have forgotten to do this. And when you go into the water, and the stern is still attached, but the bow isn't, and it starts to get crosswise, or the trailer goes under and it pulls the boat under, or the boat's attached and it makes the trailer flow. It's a mess. It is a mess. And often you don't realize what's going on, and you're trying to figure out why the boat can't move or why the boat's floating funny. So just get into that habit. Um, also, this is a good time, load all your equipment. Usually when we're launching a boat, 
we're going out to do some work. Get all your stuff out of the truck into the boat now. It's a lot easier than trying to hand it off the dock or in the water where you can drop it into the water. All right, once we're in to the water, obviously we gotta get the motor started. I can't tell you all the tricks to getting an outboard started. You have got to know your motor and be comfortable with it. Every motor has got its little tricks for getting it started. Some start every time with no problems, but if you've got any experience with outboards, you know they can be temperamental. Um, know um, that most of your outboards that have a, a console drive, they've got a throttle lever, so where you can increase the throttle without putting the motor into gear and so of course this can be useful sometimes you need to give it a little bit of gas to get it started also know how the choke works some motors have an automatic choke you don't have to worry about it uh, some you have to choke the motor which adjusts the fuel air mixture and sometimes it's a switch sometimes you push the key in but you've got to know and again with each motor it's a little different some motors you need to choke them really well until they start and then turn the choke off some you just choke them crank it a little then turn the choke off if you leave the choke out for too long you can get too much fuel you can flood it then it won't start in again know your motor um, don't start cranking that motor until you've trimmed it down and you're sure those inlets are in the water. We do not want to run that outboard out of the water and burn up the water pump. Once you do get it started, make sure that water is pumping. Make sure water is coming out of that over the, the, the top end. And it's peeing water before you get off the trailer. If it's not pumping water, you need to figure out why before you leave. So you might need to pull it right back out and work on your motor. So get in the habit of checking this before you leave the trailer. So here is um, a typical example of a controller for a console drive motor. Of course, if you've got a tiller drive, you're not gonna have any of this and you gotta know the different parts of your tiller drive. Um, so of course you got the shifter there forward makes the boat go forward back makes the boat go back the trim button if you have power trim this will raise the motor or lower the motor um, the choke as I said sometimes there's a switch down by the key sometimes you just push the key in different on different motors um, you can see this person is holding the throttle up gives it gas this only works when the shifter is out of gear. And so this is just designed to be able to rev up the engine um, when it's not in gear and when you're trying to start it. Uh, we need to talk about shifting. You have to be very careful about this. Um, there's a little, underneath the handle is a switch that you squeeze and then you can push it forward or pull it back to put it in gear. But you always wanna be very smooth, slow, and steady with this. You don't want to jam it into gear in either direction, and you definitely don't want to jam it from forward to reverse. And so if you're going forward and you want to reverse, pause in neutral, then put it in reverse. It's much easier on the transmission instead of wanging it back and forth between the two. That's not good for the motor. Okay, so that's getting the boat off the trailer into the water. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you in a bit.